Okay, so today I just wanted to go through the ionic addition mechanism. Remember before Christmas we, we did the free radical substitution mechanism, but this is a different type of reaction now, which involves the reaction of two or more molecules to make a single molecule. That's your definition. Look here of addition reaction, where two or more molecules react to form a single molecule. So the mechanism is the step-by-step -step description of how the reaction takes place. And this is an addition reaction now. So you're going to be adding on something across a double bond, if you like. So... You're going to start off with a saturated molecule like ethene here. Remember, saturated means it contains a double or a triple bond. And then you're going to form an unsaturated molecule like the alkane here, ethene. OK, now the one I'm going to describe this morning, the reaction I'm going to describe this morning is the reaction between ethene and bromine. And you're forming one, two, dibromoethane when you do when you do this reaction. That's the product of the reaction. OK, so. Just to run through again, the ethene molecule, I've drawn it like this here. So it's C2H4. And you can see here, look, that this carbon is in group four. So it has one, two, three, four electrons. This carbon's in group four. So it has one, two, three, four electrons here. And bromine is normally non-polar. OK, so what does that mean again? It means that the electrons in the covalent bond are shared equally, normally equally. But what we must remember now here in this mechanism is that you've got a really high negative region here of charge because you've got one, two, three, four electrons closely centered together there. And that's going to have an effect on the electrons that are being shared in the bromine. OK, so the first step of the reaction mechanism, step one, is called polarization. All right. So I'm just going to redraw the ethene here now again so you can see what's going on and try to, especially to start, try to keep track of the electrons. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And remember, I would have said to you that the bromine is normally not polar, where which means you'd have equal sharing. But what actually happens here is because you've got such a high region of negative charge here, the electrons get repelled or pushed away from the double bond of the ethene molecule. So they're being pushed over towards the bromine on the right, making that slightly negative and this one is slightly positive. Remember that bromine is in group seven, so it normally has seven electrons in its outer shell, right? So I've just drawn them in there. So this bromine atom here has one, two, three, four, five, six, and this is the seventh one there that it was sharing with the other bromine. This bromine on the right has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, so normally they would be shared equally, the electrons in the middle. But why are they being pushed to the right this time? Because of this highly negative region of charge here in the ethene molecule. So this is polarizing or making the bromine polar. It normally isn't, but it's the, the double bond of the ethene is pushing the bromine electrons or the electrons that are being shared here in the bromine molecule away from it. Like charges repel, remember. So now you have a situation here, you see, where your bromine molecule here is polar. And what happens is that the polarization becomes so great, OK, that it actually breaks or it actually splits. So if I just put in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and one, two, three, four, five, six and the seven is in here. But what happens here now, look, is you've got a double headed arrow, which indicates the movement of two of the electrons. So this bromine atom is getting two. This bromine atom is actually not getting any electrons from the double bond or sorry, from the single bond that's being broken. So they're receiving different numbers of electrons. So this is called heterolytic fission. Remember we met homeolytic fission in the other mechanism for the substitution to explain substitution reactions. But this is hetero now because they're both receiving different numbers of electrons. This bromine on the right is getting two. Now, it's it's got its own seven. Sorry, now I'll just draw them. I'll just draw them. Um, I'll just draw them like the dots like I was before. They're one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's got its own seven back again, its own seven electrons back in, but it's also getting that one that was belonging to the other bromine atom. Okay, so this is gaining an electron, therefore it's going to be negatively charged. And notice as well that its outer shell is now full, so it's quite stable because of the eight electrons. Here, the bromine on the left, the bromine atom on the left is actually losing, look, it's lost an electron. So now it's only got one, two, three, four, five, six. So this is going to be positively charged. Now notice that this doesn't have an unpaired electron. So it's not a free radical, it's an ion. It's a positively charged ion. This is a negatively charged ion. So this is why this mechanism is called ionic addition, okay? Because it involves the formation of ions. All right, now the next stage then is called a carbonium ion formation, okay? 
So carbonium ion formation. So we're going to form another ion now in this step, okay? So you have one here. I'm just going to redraw my ethene molecule and draw them like that and show, as I said, show the electrons there so that you can kind of figure out what's going on. Now, what? which of the two ions, remember now in the previous step, in heterolytic fission, you formed a positively charged bromine and you formed a negatively charged bromine ion. Which of those two ions do you think would migrate to the negative charge here in the double bond? Remember, the double bond is made up of one, two, three, four electrons. So it's highly negative region here. Obviously, the Br plus. Now, the Br plus has, remember, one, two, three, four, five, six electrons. It needs two. Now, the double bond in any molecule is made up of a sigma which is like a normal sigma single bond formed from the head-on overlapping of orbitals and a pi bond is formed from the sideways overlapping of orbitals, so it's a weaker bond. So it's the pi or the weaker bond that's going to get attacked here in the double bond. So if I just redraw my ethene there for a second, okay? Now, what has happened is that the pi bond, you know, the, the second bond, this one here, the weaker one, has been attacked by the bromine. The bromine had one two three four five six electrons of its own and now look this this carbon here had four x's one two three four it's lost an x therefore it's going to become a positively charged carbonium ion because it's lost an electron now just go back up here for a second this carbon had one two three four it still has one two three four okay so this carbon hasn't lost anything but the bottom one did lose an electron to the bromine that when when the bromine ion positively charged ion attacked the pi bond okay so remember we also said there before that the bromine has one two three four five six of its own now it has seven eight so now it's stable okay and um, so the carbonium ion formation means this carbon here is now positively charged now, what other ion did we make in step two that's going to attack here or attach even, not attack so much, but attract into the C plus the Br minus. So the Br minus ion then that you made in the, in the heterolytic fission attacks or attaches, I should say, onto the C carbonium positively charged ion and you form your product 1,2-dibromo ethane and that's the fourth step there where the negatively charged bromine attaches in and that's just called ionic addition because it's just adding an ion you know you're just adding an ion onto that okay and you formed your your your, your product thank you